AI is constantly evolving, constantly changing, and there are always new tools and apps that keep on popping up that I keep discovering. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new tools, apps. Actually, one is not that new, but I discovered it not too long ago, and I thought I'd share it with you in today's video. So I don't even want to waste any time. Let's get straight into it. So the first one is called Julius AI, and this is a data analysis AI tool, which by the way, this is actually the first one that I've ever found. Normally I find things to do with academic writing, like proofreading or finding research papers, but this one's actually for data analysis. And what you can do is you can analyze data through any kind of structured data. So you can add like any kind of spreadsheet into it and ask questions. And you can ask Julius AI to perform analysis for you, which is quite cool. You can visualize data and um, give instructions and give some visual data, or you can perform more advanced analysis like here this is regression modeling, which one of my um, co uh, PhD students did in the lab as well. So I, I mean, I didn't have any data to try to use it with. So if you do have data and you think that you can try to play around with this, please let me know how this works. Because I've heard really good things about it. I just didn't have anything to really um, use it with. But yeah, you can kind of see, um, get animations, modeling, automating data prep, asking questions, all of this like looks really good. And it's actually the first time that I found anything like this. So please let me know if you end up using it and if you think it's worth a try. The second one that I've recently discovered, so these are all ones that I've discovered in the last sort of week or two. It's called Avid Note. And this is one that is quite similar to, I think it was Sight, um, where you're able to read a research paper, um, look at, uh, kind of ask questions, interrogate the research paper, and take notes at the same time. So you can clearly, you can see here what you can do. You upload the paper um, first. You then use AI functions to ask questions about the paper. So actually quite similar to Unriddle, which I've shared in this platform before. And then you can save your notes and take notes at the same time. And I really like this because you can very nicely um, generate like different categories of uh, papers, topics, notes, and I like the idea, which is why I really like Unriddle, is I like the idea of being able to read, ask questions, and take notes in the same window, um, which other platforms, other AI platforms don't really allow you to do. Again, I've just discovered this, so I haven't played around with it yet, um, but I have, again, heard really good things about this in the AI community, and I think it's worth a try if you're interested in trying to find a platform that allows you to read, question, and write at the same time. The next tool that I have known for a little while but I actually forgot about is this one called SciSpace. It used to be called Typeset, but they've changed the name or I don't know what they merged or whatever. Um, so now it's called SciSpace. And this allows you to do quite a few different things actually. So I thought I'd introduce it to you. Um, you can firstly do a literature review or like a search. So ask a question. So let's just give one of these questions. Um, how does climate change affect uh, impact biodiversity and it gives you insights from I think you can change how many but let's just say from five papers it gives you this insight it also presents you with the papers and all the information there and you can go into it and read into more depth you can export this so if you're someone that's doing like a systematic review or some sort of literature search that requires you to have like a list of all the papers then this could work really well you can also ask a follow-up question to so kind of build on this and really try to define your research question quite well. So that's one thing you can do, and this I think is quite nice. I like that you're able to back up any information that you're presented uh, with literature. So that's really key for me when I, I look at AI tools. The second thing you can do is extract data from PDFs. So you can um, upload a PDF, like a research paper, for example, and extract information from this. That's quite nice. And that's a new tool that wasn't there when I last checked it. You can also read with AI Copilot. So you, this is where you import a PDF and then you can actually ask questions about it. So you can like highlight any confusing text and it can give you a definition and things like that. The last one is a paraphraser. So here you are able to paraphrase text. This is also actually new because this wasn't there when I last checked it, which was probably Two weeks ago or so so here you can actually upload a text so let's try a sample text so here is some sample text i want to make it more formal let's say oh oh okay lots of different let's make it more formal let's see what it gives me oh they're saying see why we are better than quillbot interesting <laughs> 
a bit of competition there. So they've given it, they made it more professional. You can change the length, you can make it shorter. Yeah, there you go, nice, shorter. You can change the variation. Ah, okay. So you can modify the variation and you can say, I want to change it less or change it more. I would probably say you want to change it a bit less because that makes it closer to the original. Nice, okay. Um, and then the language, and then you can also AI. Ah. So it's saying that this text is 78% AI generated, which obviously I just, this is AI generated, so probably this, this is true, but this would be a good way of checking to make sure that your text isn't mostly AI generated. You can see like a breakdown, high AI, moderate AI, low AI. Okay, that's interesting. This is, this is really useful. I like this, I actually quite like this. So why is it, why is it, use why is it different oh <laughs> i'm gonna do a video on this i think like a TikTok. cool all right that's the third one the next one that i wanted to introduce you to is this one called connected papers i might have mentioned it in the past but i feel like i didn't go into much depth so i thought i'd mention it again here this is a really nice tool that allows you to do, discover new papers so let's just say i search for iq gap one for example um this will give me a paper lots of papers that I can start to build a graph from and the search is pow powered by Semantic Scholar and this is another tool that is a, like a literature search like a PubMed for example so let's say I want to use this paper as my seed paper seed paper means the paper that I am kind of the, the primary paper where everything is kind of building up from so that should be a paper that you are really confident in that being the main focus for your research area for your topic so um i've used quite a few this month um so this is the origin paper and then it gives you this graph that links uh these other nodes and they're all linked up to this original paper so if you're doing like a literature search and you're stuck for finding more literature you can do this and discover some more papers as well so i really like this and i've said this before if you're doing like a systematic review or something you can actually screenshot this and include it and say like this is how i did it this is how i conducted my literature search x y and z but i like that the next one is this one which is called a research rabbit again this is another tool that i discovered not too long ago and it's another tool that allows you to be on top of your literature search and reading so you can firstly have like a visualization of your research area so it builds a map as well but you can really see sort of new papers similar work things like that you can visualize the papers in a bit of a network so just like that um, you can discover other networks so you can look at previous work and work by the author that has cited it so you can really build like a quite a nice network and you can share your collections as well so it's quite similar to connected papers and also lit maps if you guys have heard of that so it's just about trying to play around with them and see which one provides you with the best overall experience at the best price as well this is another tool that by the way i'm cheating here because it's not ai but i just had to mention it here it is the White Rose ethesis online website. This is a shared repository where students from Leeds University, Sheffield and York, where the PhD graduates and also actually some there's some masters here as well. They deposit their thesis so you can see what it looks like. So let me just browse by, uh, let's say, history, let's say 2015. So you can see here that there are a number of different uh, theses that you can actually just download for free. They're all PhD, but there are some masters, so you might have to like browse a little bit to find the masters. Um, I'm just gonna open one of them. You can download it and it gives you the whole, this is 232 pages. It gives you the whole thesis so you can take a look at it. And I really like a pastime of mine is looking at PhD theses to find really good examples of structure and I feel like I, I kind of am quite confident in looking at these structures and kind of picking out which ones I really like. And I think what this does is it gives you a nice basis for how you could write your thesis if you haven't written your thesis already. So I definitely recommend looking at students who have published before. Um, all you can do is, the easiest way to do this is browsing by academic department. And I would literally just search let's say biomedical science 
I've got there in Sheffield University and I can just go to one of the years and I, these are all going to be relevant to me even though the subject is not the same but actually the structure will be quite similar so when I look at it I can look at what a good image looks like I can look at what a good contents page looks like I can look at what um, like let's if you scroll down that that's a really nice image and that gives me a good example for how I could do mine if I did have a similar mRNA plot so I really recommend looking at uh, eThesis White Rose I yeah I love it and then last but not least there's um, Kahubi so Kahubi has actually collaborated or combined with Avid Note. I don't know what that means. I think they've like integrated within each other, but you can use them separately. So I thought I'd, I'd explain what this one does. So Kahubi is an AI tool that allows you to research, write, read and analyze effectively. So whilst you're doing your research, finding your literature, you can also write and take notes and analyze your data. So I think one of the reasons why they combined a Kahubi with this one, Avid Note, is because they are actually quite similar. I think students would probably want one or the other, not both. So it makes sense for them to be combined. So it's just a nice way to look for research papers, write quickly um, and read and summarize quickly, analyze data and things like that. So it just supercharges your research as it says, which I quite like. And like I said, Kahubi and Avid Notes have come together. Oh, I forgot to mention, they do have templates as well that I took, that I took a look at. So they've got templates for different functionalities that you can pick out. Uh, if you didn't know kind of how to begin, they've got templates that you can use and it can generate some text for you or provide you with analysis or whatever it is that you need. So this is quite cool too. I hope that you enjoy discovering those uh, AI tools that I shared with you, plus a not AI tool, but I really love. If you have any other suggestions for any other new AI tools that you have discovered recently, then leave it, me a comment down below. I would love to learn and hear more about those too. And I will see you in my next video. 